Hello everybody, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit with a little concertina album to share with you. Altered in papers from the Voyage Beneath the Sea collection from Graphic 45. It's um, a really fun little album to make and I've made it all from leftover papers. It's six and a quarter by four and a quarter on the covers. Pages are six by four. Um, I wanted to use this ribbon. I've had it for ages and ages, and I think it came from um, May Arts in a Graphic 45 design team box. And I've kept it and kept it, but thought that it went really well with the colours in this paper collection. So I've cut into it. Oh, um, the cover I've used just leftover chipboard pieces and ephemera cards from previous projects and a little black card to match the pages inside. And it all ties up with a little bow. And then on the back, the bow runs through a strip so that it can be moved. And there's a little chipboard piece on the back there too. And then if you open it up, let's put the ribbon down flat. It opens out, now I've kept mine quite simple, but you can make them as simple or as complicated as you like. And there's lots of room for photos, which is what these little albums are all about. Let's get a piece of paper and then I can show you. So there's room to put something behind there and then space for a photo on that page. And then it flips over and the same again. I've got one of the ephemera cards just tucked under that little pocket in the corner. I love the seahorses. And then a plain page. And again, that little card slides under there. These are the little pockets and tags. And we've got another pocket down here. A plain page opposite. Can't get it out. Ephemera card just fits perfectly in that pocket. And then I've got a sideways pocket on the side of this page as well. And then we get to the back. I love, love this paper. I think it's my favourite. And there's a little tag down at the bottom, just stuck down with tape on half of it. And the ephemera card fits under the back. So you could leave your pages completely plain and just add photos to make it a really lovely little photo book. Um, the papers I've used are eight by eight and they fit perfectly. You can cut two pages out of one sheet. So the papers are cut um, just slightly smaller than the pages. So that's that side. And then it flips over the other way as well. And again, I've sort of coordinated the papers all the way through to match. And then if you stand it up, it concertinas out. How fun is that? So if you carry on and stay with me, I'll show you how to make it. So to make your little book, you want to have one eight by six piece of card folded in half with no flap on. And then however many you want to add um, pieces that are eight and a half by six with a flap and you sort of zigzag them and put double-sided tape underneath the flap and they all get sandwiched together. So start with the one that is just eight by six, hook the first flap under it of the next page and then you just carry on doing that and adding your pages until you have added everything that you have cut out. You might want to just score as you go along um, with your bone folder, just to flatten down the creases. And then let's add the next one. I should have taken the tapes off before I started. So fold that one up, line up the top edge, bring the edges together, press down, press down, and crease. And again. So it's really simple. Great little idea. And fold it down. So 
let's keep going. And fold it under. Press down. So you can see it really is quite a fun little book. Now I've stopped, there's an awful lot of pages in there. So I have stopped, how many have we got? Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve on that side. And then we'll have two less on this side because we've got the covers to stick on. So um, add as many pages as you want in your little book and then make your covers. So for the covers, I'm using up um, off cuts from sheets of paper really for or from the Voyage Under the Sea collection. I've got odd back and front covers and then um, all sorts for the pages. But I thought it was a great way to use up those scraps that we've got. So you want two pieces, I'll start with the chipboard, two pieces of chipboard that are a quarter of an inch bigger in length and width than the size of your pages. So my pages are six by four. So my chipboard is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And the paper that I'm going to stick onto it is an inch bigger both ways. So the first thing to do is to stick down the chipboard. My chipboard's two, oops, two millimetre thick, um, which works really well. It won't bend. Let's do them both together. So I've got that one and this one. Squiggle, squiggle. And stick down. And then take your double-sided tape. Find the end and just put tape all the way around the edges. Now I like just to sort of take the tape around the edge without ripping it off and then you can peel the backing off in one go. Whoops, but if you'd rather just do each side separately then go ahead and do that. That's that one, let's just do this one. this around like that and then we want to mitre the corners so I'm taking a piece of chipboard that's the same width putting it across the corner taking my pencil let's just grab the pencil drawing a line and then you've got a an accurate guideline to cut your corners. So do that around all four corners and cut, oh, peel your backing tape off if you've put it on in one strip. Otherwise you'll defeat the object of doing it. That's one and where's the end? Two. Trim off your corners, cutting along your line. The key is to have an eighth of an inch of paper sticking out under the corners of your chipboard pieces. So don't cut right up by the chipboard. And now we're ready to fold them up. So I always fold long sides first. So use your surface as your straight edge. Press up and down on the chipboard and then firmly fold the paper over and stick it in place. And then you'll see that you've got little triangles of paper at the corners sticking out over the chipboard. Squash them inwards. You can do that with your scissors or a ruler or just your fingers. So push them in to cover the corners and then lift and stick down. And then the same at the other end. And lift and stick. Like that. You might want to just go around those edges 
with your bone folder just to flatten them down. And then do the same again on your other piece. So lift. Because it's so small, you can sort of stick and fold and stick at the same time. Squash in your corners. Lift up and stick down. And squash in your last set of corners. Lift up and stick down. And then our covers are done. And all we have to do now is to stick the covers onto the front and the back of our book, the back leaf. Just make sure that you've got enough pages on so that your pages fold out like that and they're single sides. And then put double sided tape all the way around, strip down the middle. I've taken off the middle strip, the backing and the top and now I've got to stand up because I can't position it without standing up and then you literally just position it over your cover and stick it on down. Now where's my ear gone at the end? I can sit down now. Let's just find it. Is it this end? stuck back down again and then I can pull them all off and then pull pull I love this bit and pull and that's one side stuck and then tape again let's put my glasses on I can't see anything without my glasses on these days so bad So tape all the way around, one down the middle and at the bottom and take the backing strips off. You can take them all off this time because we're just going to sandwich this other cover on. Now if you're using um, covers that have got a directional pattern on, before you stick this side on, just check that you've got your patterns going the right way. Mine are different, so that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is just centre up my front. I can feel that it's sitting in the right place. Got it down on the work surface and just sandwich it together. And then you have got a really lovely little concertina album all ready to decorate. Now, if you wanted to, you could stick the pages together in between the folds. So that, that one, that one, that one. And then that would make you a really nice little book that opens like that. You could go one step further and create pockets in these pages if you wanted to by taping down the back of each fold and along the bottom and then you've got little pockets to put tags in but I'm going to have mine as a concertina album and which is my cover let's get it the right way that's the back this one is my cover so I've made a cover to go on or a section to go on just out of one of the chipboard pieces again I'm using leftovers all the bits that haven't gone into other projects so I've used a chipboard piece an ephemera card um, another ephemera card at the back and then one of the large ones I've backed all of that on black card cut out a border strip poked it underneath the chipboard section popped another chipboard piece on top and put double-sided tape on the back ready for it to be stuck down. So let's take that off. Take the backing off. I always say take the tape off. 
So take the backing off. Get rid of those ends. Lift it up. And I've made it so that the strip at the bottom just sits at the bottom edge of the cover. Like that. And then I've put a little bit of glossy accents on the C, the word, and a little bit of glitter in there. So that's the cover. And then for the back, I thought I'd have a ribbon tie. Because I'm going to decorate my pages, my album's going to sort of grow in size. So I didn't want to restrict it with a band or anything around it, but I thought it might be quite nice to have a ribbon tie. And I found this ribbon which I thought went really well with the greens and the blues. I think it's Mayart ribbon. I think it came from Graphic 45 in a design team box. And I've had it in the cupboard for ages, so I thought I'm going to use it on this project. And I'm going to attach it on the back. So I've made a band. Our little book is four inches wide, so I've made a band that's two and a half inches. And I've scored it at three quarters and then half an inch and I'm going to put first of all I'm going to ink the edges actually of it so this was just from the paper again another leftover and it's 12 by 12 this pattern and on the back I've got the same but in the 8 by 8 so then I don't know how long my ribbon's going to I'm going to need the ribbon so we'll trim it in a minute so I'm going to fold it over fold it over and put double-sided tape over the join like that and then a strip at the top take off the backing so the ribbon will actually move from side to side inside this band what am I doing Cool. Just do it the caggy handed way. Bring the little book back in, flip it over, get the shells going the right way, and then I'm just going to check on the front where I want the ribbon to come round. So I want it towards the bottom over that orange band. So I'm just going to hold it so that I can see perhaps up a quarter of an inch. So definitely down here. I'm just trying to line the shells up as well. I'm telling you porkies, I think the, um, the pattern is the same size, so 12 by 12 for both of these. So then the ribbon will move through that little slot and then turn it over and tie it in a lovely bow, she says. Maybe I'll cut it here. I've had it for so long, I don't really want to cut it. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. Okay. Maybe I've gone too long, it's just go a bit shorter. It's got wire in it as well, so we can make a really lovely, really lovely bow. You don't want to cut your ends too short because you want the ribbon to be able to expand depending on how much you add in your book. So this is a very caggy handed bow. Apologies. So I've got it there, got it there. I'm just going to make it just a little bit bigger and make this side just a little bit longer. Let's tie it again. Let's do a better bow this time. I'm trying to tie it upside down as well, which is just um, not working at all. So let me turn it round. And do it properly. 
around it goes. Through the back. I'm not sure that this is any better. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know why I can't tie it. Okay, we're done. So then I'm just going to um, trim my ends like that. And that is it. That is our little concertina album all ready to decorate. Now, I have cut, let me just grab all of these page of papers. I had um, quite a few 8x8 sheets left over, so I've cut my pages so that they are 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths, which means you can get two of them out of every 8x8 sheet. But the little book's also the right size to use patterns and solids, and if you wanted to use a 12x12 sheet, you can get four sides out of your 12 by 12 sheet. So cut yourself some papers and we'll come back and I'll show you how to decorate it or my take on um, how I've decorated my little book. So I've started to add my papers. So let me show you from the beginning. I've just stuck one of the ephemera cards on the inside cover but left it so that you could put something underneath. Left this side plain um, for a photo. I went orange on this side and again you can add something under that little pocket if you wanted to and a photo on that side and then flipping over I've just added one of the little tags from the pocket and tags um, set and a funky little deep sea diver but you could go that way if you wanted and a space for a photo on that side and then I've just got papers now to 